Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions is the newest hot game on the market, but is it worth it? Like all my review videos, I'm not going to make you wait until the end to find out the answer. If you like co-working, body doubling, and accountability for your productivity, but in a gamified version full of customization, world lore building, and cute animal companions, then Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions is absolutely for you. I'm going to talk about what makes this game really, really cool, and then you can decide for yourself if it's something you want to try out. First and foremost, the customization in the game is absolutely phenomenal. Your avatar is fully customizable, nothing is stuck to gender identity, you can choose body type based on a sliding scale on both masculine versus feminine, and it's not even titled masculine or feminine, it's hourglass versus triangle. There are tons of free options, and when I say free, you actually don't ever have to spend real life money. The game has built in currency, and you gain more every time you level up, and you level up by doing tasks. So the game is just a one time purchase. But I'll focus on that later. Right now, I want to talk more about the customization and representation. Mind you, I am a white woman, so this is all coming from a white woman's perspective off of what I've heard from others. So take my opinion with a grain of salt because you'll want to check out your creators of color and see what they say about the game. The first thing I want to note is the hairstyles in the game are absolutely stunning. There's tons of different options and representation. And more importantly, when you put on headphones, hats, or beanies in the game, the hair isn't suppressed and changed to match those pieces of clothing. The hair looks like it should look as if you were wearing that item of clothing. And this might sound like a little thing, but it really does matter to those that have these hair types. So I'm really glad to see it in a video game. You can also change the color of your hair, your eyes, and your skin to literally anything you want. The game has pre-made color options, but a color wheel can also pop up and you can literally make it any color you want. So for customization, it gets an A+, and that goes into the room customization as well. Your entire space can be changed to match what you want to see in your world. From whimsy and purples to earthy tones of greens and yellows to gothic black, there's no limit on what you can do to make the space feel like it's yours. Now let's talk about the in-game currency. In-game, they're called spirit credits. You gain experience by logging in, getting tasks done, setting a daily timer, and overall just having the game open to help with your productivity. Spirit credits are currently used to access further customization options in the game, but because the developers have already said the game is going to have future update support, they could be used for pretty much anything in the future. Now, I've mentioned discovering spirits a couple times. The one cool thing about this game is your character actually has a storyline. You're doing, studying, and discovering spirits in Spirit City. By customizing the task you're doing with the environment around you, you can have the perfect setup to lure a spirit. That's where the spirit decks comes in. This is the gamification part that I really enjoy because it gives me a passive collection that I can just access as time goes on. I don't have to focus on finding them, but I can also focus if I want to. For example, I'm obsessed with the dust bunny and it will be my forever spirit. So for me, the first thing I did was set up the environment to lure the dust bunny. So I had my perfect companion with me and the others all get passively as time goes on. You also have to level up to gain access to different spirits, so you'll only have a couple available to begin with, and then as you level up, more will be possible to lure in. Now you're probably wondering what I meant by environment. Well, that's where the lighting and activity come in, as well as sounds. The entire game is customizable to make it exactly what you want, from time of day, to the activity you're doing at different locations, from typing at your desk, to knitting in front of the fireplace, or just relaxing on your bed. Every environment has the possibility to be customized with different lightings and sounds to lure in spirits, or simply make your productivity the best that it could be for you. This is where accessibility and approachability come into play for me, because when it comes to the rain sounds, the rolling thunder, the soothing wind, all of these options have visuals associated to them. But the creators thought ahead. 
you don't have to have the rain visually on the screen as well as the sound. You also can visually have the rain, but have the sound turned off. This is amazing for anyone that gets overstimulated visually, and especially with the rumbling thunder, because lightning is shown in the background. So you can turn the lightning off, but still have that glorious sound. And as a side note, I'm a relatively able-bodied person, but I do have ADHD and I do get overstimulated with auditory sounds. So this is coming from my perspective and yours might be a little different. Speaking of auditory, the next part of the game is kind of the biggest point. It's lo-fi beats. The title of the game is Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions. The game has many, many built-in soundtracks from homework radio. They're all royalty-free, can be played on streams if you're a streamer without any worry of DMCA takedown. The other really cool thing is they have a built-in web browser. You can load into YouTube via the game. You can log into your YouTube account or just use it signed out. That way you can search any video you want to watch and have it playing in the background or the foreground of the game, meaning you can listen to your favorite ASMR or maybe a tutorial or a lecture that has been uploaded for you without ever having to leave the game. They've also made sure to put a note at the bottom to remind you that live streams and YouTube videos, all of that might affect the DMCA takedown. So if you're a streamer, make sure that what you're playing on YouTube is your own content or royalty free. And if you don't have YouTube premium, the ads are going to play. So be aware of that. But it's still a really cool feature. You could listen to literally anything you wanted as long as it was on YouTube. You can also take away the entire UI of the game other than the active timer and possible to do item on the bottom right so that you always know what time of day it is and you can't hyper focus yourself into something and lose track of what's happening in the real world. Which leads me into the actual tools of the game. The productivity tools are really simple but also effective. The first is a to-do list where you can write out whatever you need to do for the day or in the future. When you're done, check them off. You can also rearrange them and remove them entirely when you're fully done. The next is the POMO style timer. This is a timer that can be as low as one minute up to 60 minutes, which is great because it sort of limits you on your ability to hyper focus in and maybe not perfectly take care of yourself. The game kind of forces you to make sure that you take a break. And the break timer is also customizable anywhere from one minute to 60 minutes. POMO style timers allow you to have sessions, so you can set 30 minute sessions with five minute breaks and have it repeat three times or however many you need and however many minute increments that fit your lifestyle. You can reset your timer at any point, you can pause at any point and you can skip the current timer. So for example, if you decide that you don't need a break right now, you can skip that break and go right into the next working session. You also don't have to use the timer if you don't want to. It's just there as a tool if you wanna use it. The next is the habit tracker, which I absolutely adore. The habit tracker allows you to put in customized habits and check them off throughout the week. You can also remove the habit on certain days if you don't want to do them. For example, I take my medicine every day, so I check off the days I've taken it. But I only want to do my 10 push-ups on a couple days a week. So I just remove the days that I don't want to do them. Then my personal favorite is the in-game journal. The journal not only has free writing, but prompts for you as well. So if you are in a state where you kind of want to get your mind working, but you're not sure what to do, you can just scroll through the prompts available. Maybe you want to think about how difficult today is going to be and how you're going to prepare for that. Or you want to think about how grateful you are for what's going on around you. There's lots of prompts and I'm sure that writers will really enjoy this. The journal also saves in-game and it isn't sent anywhere else, but of course you can copy and paste it to wherever you need it to go. So whether or not you're doodling for 30 minutes or you're studying for seven hours, Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions is an amazing tool to have up in the background to help keep you accountable, not only for your work, but for taking care of yourself as well. And yes, you can pet your spirit companions. Now, some commonly asked questions that I'm going to address are things that came up when I was streaming Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions on its release day. A lot of people were wondering if you can have your friends come over in game and hang out with you. And as of right now, that isn't possible. But keep in mind that this game is run by an indie dev. 
Not only that, but they didn't want to sell out to big publishers and self-published. And the game is on sale right now. And even when it's not, it's only $15 Canadian, which is an absolute steal for a game that doesn't require you to spend money in it. They've also said that they plan to keep future updates happening and support the game as it develops. And with all the possible built-in lore options from little hints around the game like Katsudon Ramen, we could have a ramen shop we can hang out in, maybe a train station. Having the game set in a place called Spirit City means there are tons of different options that could potentially be added in, either for free or paid DLCs. All in all, I've been using this game in its demo form ever since the demo came out for a daily productivity tool, and also it's just pretty to look at. The other thing I want to point out is that the game's not perfect. Nothing is when it comes out, sadly. The body options are not as great as I would want. I would love a much wider range of those that are plus size to have representation. I would also love accessibility tools like mobility devices to either be shown in the background or physically put on the avatars as an option. Sitting in a wheelchair at the desk, for example, would be amazing. There are tons of pride flags in the game as it stands, and more will be added over time. Even the spirits themselves have alternate colorways that represent the trans flag. So even though the game isn't perfect, it's bringing me a lot of joy, and I'm excited to see how it develops over time. And as its main purpose of a productivity tool, it checks all the boxes. For the time being, Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions is available to work on PC only, but I wouldn't be surprised if as the game earned money and became more popular, that it would be expanded onto Mac and other platforms. All in all, this game gets a 10 out of 10 from me for its current state, and about an 8 out of 10 for needing development in certain areas. But I highly recommend the game, I'm absolutely loving it, and you can get it while it's on sale. They also didn't pay me to say this, but as someone who loves indie developers and those that choose to self-publish, make sure you leave a review on Steam if you do enjoy the game and end up getting it, because it's going to help the company out a lot and help push this game into staying active and getting future updates. Thanks so much for watching. Give the video a like if you found it helpful, comment with any questions, subscribe if you feel like it, but most importantly, have a very magical day.